join me call to worship. Happy New Year to all of you. May each of us feel the welcome of God's love. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of stars and sages, open our senses to know your presence in the ordinary moments of our days. Lead us into the gifts of a new year, full of hope and promise, knowing your grace will guide us. Amen. Now, opening hymn from Voices United, number 55, in the bleak midwinter, we are going to sing three verses. came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to, to, to the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is, to say, is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child who all were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to say thank you to Catherine for your singing this morning. And you made uh, this day the first day of the New Year special. Thank you. It was St. John's tradition for a lay person to proclaim the Word of God 
by reading a scripture every Sunday before pandemic. So this morning, then barely did it for us. That means our tradition is back from this year on. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Simeon this morning. Something that you may not know, or something that might surprise you. Simeon is often identified as one of the 70 scholars who translated the Old Testament from Hebrew to Greek in the first century, which is known as the Septuagint. He surely was aware of Malachi's prophecy. The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come into his temple. Simeon has, as Saint Luke has it, has been has also been promised that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So Simeon has been waiting, anticipating, and preparing a long time. Not just years or even decades but centuries. So our sacred tradition says Simeon was more than 270 years old when he received the Holy Child in his arms. And there's more. According to the sacred legend, Simeon was blind. Why do we have these kinds of legendary traditions? It is a kind of trick or tactic to protect the truth. So that only those who seek truth may find it. Ancient sages, including the Bible writers, were experts for that. They tried to hide, not reveal the truth, but hide the truth, or to cover the truth in their, stu- in their stories with tricks and tactics so that the truth may not be contaminated, manipulated, misused, or abused by the powerful or even by the public. What could a 270-year-old blind man possibly see? Blind men don't see. So you, do you deny tradition and declare it to be untrue and just wrong? And in the end, you may throw away the entire Bible and never have a chance to encounter the bottom line of Simeon's own words. My eyes have seen your salvation. For most of us, the world is limited to the physical, the tangible, and the sensory. We have come to believe, or we are accustomed to to believe, that reality and truth are defined by what we know, what makes sense, 
and what we understand. More than not, that is determined by our five senses. Sight, hearing, touching, smell, and taste. Seeing and blindness just don't go together. They are opposites. So Simeon either has sight or he is blind. Which is it? What if it's both at the same time? What if he, ha he is blind but he does see? As long as we try to make sense of it and resolve the tension between seeing and blindness, we will miss the beauty, the deeper meaning, and the invitation of the story. Seeing is more than sight. That day in the temple, Simeon saw more than physical sight could perceive. Physical sight would see Jesus, a mere eight-day-year-old boy. But that doesn't what Simeon says he saw. He says, my eyes have seen your glory, your salvation. Which is it? Is it a boy or is it salvation? This is not simply an event or a story in history. The presentation of our Lord in the temple is happening everywhere and all the time. Particularly when the invisible is seen, when intangible is touched, the unspoken is heard, the uneaten is tasted, and the odorous is fragrant. Have you not had such experiences in your life? That's the moment of the present presentation of the Lord in your temple and your salvation. I'd like to highlight three salvations which we seldom recognize or take for granted. The first one is this. Being born in this world as a human being is our salvation. Do you agree with me? We can be born an animal, an insect, a bird or fish. My daughter was born on July 24, 1996 at 12.58 p.m. It was, for me, it was the a moment of the presentation of the Lord. The next morning, a nurse brought her in where my wife and I stayed. And she came in with her fingers crossed and turned her head left and right, ups and downs. It looks like she says, where am I? Am I fallen in the right place? Or who are they? Are they so-called parents? Can I trust them?
some type of curiosity, wonder, and tension. I recognized her in the eyes. Oh, she came from somewhere else. As a Christian, we say she's from God. And she does not belong to me. That's what I, that, that's my sense. She belongs to God. So my, I have tremendous responsibility from now on to give her best opportunity, best lessons that I learned from my church. I think I, I, I have developed that kind of relationship with my daughter ever since. Unfortunately, after she, she didn't make to come to see me over Christmas due to weather, so that's the re reason we canceled our Christmas Eve service, but right after Christmas, she flew to Calgary to see her friends instead of seeing me first. Yeah, that's, she doesn't belong to me. Only human being we seek truth, worship God, struggle for a better world through justice and peace, and dream of eternal salvation beyond our five senses. Living in Canada is our salvation at this present world. For the past five years, we have experienced skyrocketing housing price. There are many you know, issues and compli complicated reasons, but one of the major one is a lot of people in the world want to come to Canada to make it home and their salvation. Canada has 370,000 newcomers each year for the past five years. Don't be surprised. The, the Canadian government goal to welcome newcomers each year is 450,000. Hundred thirty thousand out of 370,000 are from India. That's the one of the reasons that we come across more people from India on the street or in the mall. How many populations are there in, in New, New Tecumseh? 35,000? So we need at least 10 more new towns of the size of New Tecumseh to build each year in order to meet the demand. That's why, you know, a lot of constructions seems to be everywhere in the GTA area. We might say, we don't need them. Not only housing price, but, you know, shortage of land issues and many more issues we have. But what's the lesson from the Christmas story, particularly in the town of Bethlehem? When the Holy Family 
but in reality, newcomers or strangers arrived in town. The reality is there's no room in the inn. Thankfully, they find a place called a stable. And the good news is our salvation is born in the stable. In reality, here in Canada, without the newcomers, we may not proper we may not have a proper pension in the near future. Because Canada has the lowest birth rate in the developed countries. The third one, being a Christian, particularly being part of the United Church of Canada, is our salvation. Through so this community of faith, we are becoming a more welcoming and open-minded people to build God's kingdom for all people of God, regardless of one's background. Physical, cultural, and social. Without this community of faith called the United Church of Canada, I think I may not, you know, break some kind of spell of bias or prejudices against some issues. How about you? That is our salvation. We practiced it last year, 2022, and we will continue to practice in this new year. So let us give thanks to God for giving us another opportunity to work together and to build God's kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. We have been given the gift of another year, a gift of renewal and hope, a gift of fresh starts and possibilities, and the opportunity to share that gift with others. As we contemplate all that lies ahead, may our service in this community bring about renewal and hope for any in need. So let our giving provide fresh starts and possibilities for all those whom this gift touched. So our offering is now being received.
opened in prayer in unison together. Abundant and renewing God, guide us in the endeavors of this new year ahead, that we might serve you to bring about the redemptions of your world and healing for all your children. May these resources enrich the outreach and ministry of this community of faith as we praise you with our lives, so that all may know that you are disciples. Amen. Please be seated. We traditionally have a communion on Christmas Eve. So we are going to that format this morning. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts to God. We lift them up in hope, peace, joy, and love. Let us give God our thanks and praise. We come in our yearning for wholeness, seeking comfort and nurture. The gift of life comes in the beginning, just a word created light, matter, energy, and order. A just word created wholeness, a place for growth. In that growth, people longed for God's presence, reaching into mystery for understanding finding the gift of faith. Quietly in dirt and dust, in straw and suffering, a tiny child was born, heralding a new beginning, a new life, and a new opportunity. The child grew, shining light into the lives of brokenness, comforting some, challenging some, making others afraid. The light of your glory has now shone with splendor in our world. For you gave Jesus Christ your only Son, that we might have power to become your children through him. We came to earth, that by his poverty we might become rich. Who was humbled that we might be exalted. You made us Therefore, with the whole company of saints in heaven and on earth, we proclaim and celebrate the birth of our Savior, and we sing with joy. gather at the table, we remember the last meal he shared with his friends, how they gathered in an upper room to celebrate the story of liberation and freedom, how he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and passed it among them, saying, Then later he took the cup, he blessed it and passed it, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant. Whenever you hear your word, remember me. And so God of cross, empty tomb and banquet, we remember the life and death of Jesus, and we give thanks for the love he shared with all he met. We remember and we share in that great mystery. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. 
In that hope, we still yearn for wholeness and pray for hope in our world. We pray for our friends and families, for neighbors and strangers, for those who are ill, for those who are lonely, for those for whom this night or this day, this season is difficult, for refugees, for those who live their lives and birth their children far from the comfort and familiarity of home, for all those without a place to call home. Pour your grace and love upon all the peoples of the world so that your peace and your justice will be known. So on this day, when we remember his birth, we remember too the gift that Jesus called us to share with one another, recalling the words that he gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, In the breaking of this bread, we remember God's presence and the nourishment offered to the world. In the pouring of this cup, we remember the life giving love of God for the world. The gift of God for the people of God. So come for all things are now ready. So I believe you have individual sacrament cup. So fill the first plastic one. When you're ready, just hold it for a while so we can eat together. The body of Christ is broken for all of us. And feel the next tap. The cup of salvation shared for all of us. join me in prayer after communion. May these gifts of bread and wine and new birth open to us a world full of possibility and promise. We offer ourselves to you, O God, in response to the greatest gift of all, the making of heaven. Amen. Amen. Closing hymn from Voices United, number 76. See amid the winter's snow.
blessing and benediction. As we leave this place of worship today, may we be blessed in the discovery of new opportunities, new ways to love, live, and reach out. May God journey with us into this new year as we are full of hope and ready to embrace all that God offers to fill us up. And now may we go out in faith, trusting that God will lead us. May we go in love, believing in God's saving grace. And may we go in peace, recognizing God's precious gift given to each one of us. Amen. Amen.